What's up, guys? The gate was uh, 4.45 million. Highest single night gate in the arena's history. 21 consecutive sellouts. 19,442 in attendance. Uh, performance of the nights went to Dober and Pantoja. And the fight of the night was uh, Moreno and Kaikara, France. What's up, Dana? Um, great main event. The, the scorecards seemed dominant, but actually in the real fight itself, it seemed a lot closer than that. What was your thoughts on the fight? And, uh, I, I didn't think so. I thought it was completely dominant. You didn't I think mean, there was five knockdowns in the first two rounds. You didn't think any of the submission attempts at the end in the last two rounds? She could have got one. What did you think? I of mean, yeah, she could have. She didn't. There's a big difference between submission attempts and knockdowns. Fair. Not even comparable. What did you think of Amanda's performance overall? I think that uh, two things. I think Juliana's tough as nails, and her will to win is second to none. I mean, she wanted to win. Um, you know, I think as dominant as Amanda was, and she was dominant tonight, I didn't think it was close any way, shape, or form. It was a complete shutout. Um, but uh, she still looked a little gun shy to me, you know. But, you know, going in against the person who beat you the first time, I, I can see that happen. But, I mean, it's stupid for me to even say that. It was an absolutely dominant performance. You think it was gun shy or she was just more conscious of her cardio and wanting yeah, to? Yeah, I think she was concerned about her cardio probably because um, when you think about the way that she fought Cyborg, she usually goes in and throws tons of punches. She had Juliana hurt many times, uh, had her on crazy legs a couple times and never really went in for the kill. What would you like to see for Amanda next? Or she said she wanted to take some time off. You think that's reasonable? Absolutely, yeah. Cool. Co-main event, obviously Brandon Moreno wins the interim title. What did you think of his performance and uh, that fight in general? The fight was awesome. It was fight of the night um, on a great card with a lot of good fights. Um, you know, Moreno's another one. Tough, durable guy. Kai Car France was in there to win. He got caught. So they're obviously going to do the fourth fight with Figueredo. I know that traditionally we don't like to see those fights four times, but is that a fight that's so good we could just see it play out over and over? Ten times. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's one of those unique, freaky deals where who doesn't want to see that fight again? It's just, it's just yeah. And nor, I'm the worst with that shit. I hate that stuff, you know. If you got a guy who's up two to one or whatever, you don't ever need to see that fight again, ever. Um, but this is just one of those, those weird ones that you can. Uh, what did you think of the Derek Lewis stoppage? What, did you think it was too soon? I think, yeah. I think it was too soon. Uh, but to be fair, Murgliata is a great ref. The way that he fell, probably nine out of ten of the people in this room would have jumped on him and stopped the fight, so including me. No. Last one from me. You have a, a saying that you put on fights every weekend. I don't know if you saw the news, but apparently not everyone can do that. Uh, the Jake Paul fight ended up being cancelled a week out from the from the, the bout. I wondered if you had any thoughts on it, and I know how much you love being asked about it. Nobody can do that. Nobody can do it. And, you know, I'm not going to sit up here and be happy or gloat that their fight fell out. I mean, both those guys, I'm sure, put in a lot of hard work and a lot of training to get ready for this fight, spent money to get ready for this fight. But I will say this, just because you were an accountant here doesn't mean you know what the fuck goes on here <laughs> and doesn't mean that you can run a fight promotion company. You know, I think that uh, Jake Paul probably needs to get some different people around him. If he's going to stay in the sport, he needs to be with guys that actually really know how to put on fights. What did you make of the whole, his opponent was too big and... and I think they sold under a million dollars in tickets and it cost $500,000 to turn the fucking lights on at MSG. That's what I think. Oh, not to mention the fact that hotel rooms in New York and transportation and everything else is very expensive. Yeah. Um, you would know better than me. Do they get that money back if they put a deposit on the, the garden or do they have to rearrange the date or how does it work if you cancel out an event this so close to, to fight night? It depends on their deal with MSG. I don't know. That's, that, that, that's up to them and MSG. I don't know what their deal I know what my deal is. I don't know what their deal is. Okay. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, right next to him. Uh, is there an update on Anthony? I know he injured his leg. We didn't know if it was a broken break or anything. What's the question? Was there an update on Anthony Smith? He hurt his leg in the fight. Yeah. I do, did, did anybody? Yeah. No fracture. And then Ankle Live was back here. He called for a title fight in his last fight, ended up fighting Anthony Smith instead. He said he's Well, all right. Let me answer that question. Okay, where is that, actually? He says, uh, 
What, what, do, what do I got to do to get a title? Well, you were number four. You fought number five, uh, right? I mean, I, it's, it's simple math on how this is going to work. He's close. He's close. And then same th similar uh, position with Pantoja. He has wins over both Kai and Brandon when they were on tough. He, who else is left for him to fight? Because now that you have the fourth fight, he seems to be the odd man out. Again. It's true. And, I mean, that would be a no-brainer if he didn't just win <laughs> the interim championship. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, he's close. They're both very close. They're in good. You couldn't be in a better position than they're both in right now. Yair was back here, and he said he wants to wait for Alex Volkanovski to heal, even if Alex goes after the lightweight title. Is there any update on that situation? No. And, and you know how I feel about waiting. Dana right here. Um, can you talk a little bit about, like, the state of the 145 women's division? Because, you know, at the press conference, Juliana was pretty critical about it, saying all the real fights are at 135. But Amanda said she wants to go up to fight at 145 for her next one. So, you know, what's the realistic possibilities for her? Very. I mean, we'll figure it out. She's the double champ. I love the kid. I have a great relationship with her. She's been amazing to work with, and uh, I'll do whatever she wants to do. And in your, I know, like, you don't like to make fights on the night. But, um, but. but <laughs> yeah, is, is there anyone that readily comes to mind, whether it be like a, a trilogy with uh, Valentina or – someone else that comes to mind for the next uh, opponent for Amanda. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. Normally I would say, come on, man. That's not a bad idea. I mean, really, when you think about it. Okay. I'm not saying yes. I'm just saying it's not a bad idea. Gotcha. And I want to ask about the decision to bring uh, Figueredo inside the ring or inside the octagon. It we never really of a, it's, You know what? It was kind of an in-the-moment thing. And then when I, he got up there, I was like, well, that was fucking rude. We shouldn't. This kid is having his moment, and he's got Figueredo standing in his face. But it happened. It wasn't horrible, you know. And we meant no disrespect to to Moreno, but came off pretty disrespectful. Gotcha. And I caught you saying something to Kai before the announcement was read or the decision was or announced. Uh, what do you say to him, if you want to share? It's just a great fight. Great fight. He said, "I'll be back." Very cool. Thank you. Question for you. I know that we have Amanda Nunes. She's the greatest female of all time, but where do you consider amongst all fighters in that conversation for the GOAT? All fighters? All fighters, male and female. Well, I mean, uh, well, I'm glad you asked me that question, actually. Um, you know, I still consider John Jones. It's time to start talking about Kamaru Usman. You know, he's one fight away from tying Anderson Silva. He already beat John Jones and, uh, and GSP. And now he's, uh, he, he's in his next fight, if he beats Leon Edwards, he ties Anderson Silva. So, um, yeah, he's in the discussion. Right now, Valentina Shevchenko, she's number one pound for pound female in the rankings. Does that change Tuesday and Amanda takes her spot back? It's up to you guys. You guys decide those rankings, not me. But, um, you know, Nunes and... Shevchenko, are, they're both two of the best ever. Lastly, on the note of Pantoja, if we have that quadrilogy fight with Moreno and Figgy, would you make him the backup fighter for that? It's a great idea. I like it, Jamal. Figueredo called for that fight in Brazil, and Brandon said he would be down to go to Brazil for the fight. Is there plans to go to Brazil next year? Yeah, we're, we're planning on hopefully going to Brazil next year. Um, again, See what this crazy world throws at us in the next uh, six months. Uh, Dana over here. Yeah. Uh, the last time the UFC was in Dallas, there was nine finishes out of 14 fights. This one, I believe, it was seven finishes out of 14. Uh, what does it mean for you to come back to Dallas after this long layoff? And uh, what do you think of the event in overall? Well, it was good to come back. I mean, we haven't been here in a long time. Um, sellout, incredible crowd. Awesome city. We've had a blast here since we've been here. Uh, I loved it. I mean, I couldn't say enough good things. Everything here was incredible. Uh, when can we see the UFC back in Dallas? I only ask that because I live an hour away from Dallas, so it's just convenient. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> well, we haven't left yet, but, uh, you know, I, I, I could see us coming back much sooner than four years. Much sooner than four years. I tried. Just, so, just for the record, I tried. This is the first place I tried to come back to during the pandemic. They wouldn't take us. 
They wouldn't let me do a full arena. Houston would. So I went to Houston five times. So that, that's, that's, uh, that's why it's been so long since we've been here. You done with me? I'll get one more. Yes, sir. Yeah, Juliana's got a big chunk missing from her forehead. Uh, she's going to see a plastic surgeon right now. Um, take some time to heal, and then, and then I don't know. I, I mean, she, she got pretty banged up tonight. I mean, she got – it was like five or six knockdowns in the first two rounds. She was hurt. She needs to take some time off and relax, spend some time with her daughter, and, and then we'll go from there. Cool? Dana over here. Yeah. What do you think about Hamdi Abdul Wahab's performance? He's now the first UFC fighter from Egypt, and now he's got and got in the first win as an Egyptian fighter. That was a badass fight too. You're talking about two two big dudes with some serious cardio, man. Um, yeah. What, what's the question? What do I think? I think it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you look at what's going on over in that region right now, with not only this company but the sport. Um, I, 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 I said 10 years ago you're going to see some good guys coming out of this region, and now we're really starting to see it. So I just expect it to grow. We, we're, we're going to Ab – first of all, and I'm glad you asked me that too. This made me think of this. Abu Dhabi is literally almost sold out. So for anybody that, that wants to get tickets and, and whatever, they're doing like, like VIP packages right now. Um, get your tickets now if you, if you, if you want to go, um, number one. Number two – when I get there, I've been talking about this for a year. Now when we get there, I'm finally going to make all these big announcements that I've been waiting to do. Um, uh, me and the government over there are ready to roll. We, we, we're ready to announce, so I'm excited. And, and once we implement all these things that we're working on over there, to your question, it's, it's going to be huge for, 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 for uh, local fighters out there. Yeah, and then what do you think about uh, where, where do you go from now with uh, Derek Lewis? Because you know he suffered that first round loss, but it could have debatable that it was an early stoppage. Eh, I, I I like the ref, but I wouldn't debate that that was an early stoppage. It was definitely an early stoppage. When you jump right back up like that and you're ready to go, and you know, listen, he was a little rocked, but um, no more rocked than Juliana was. You know, three four times during the fight, and she fought five rounds. He made a mistake. Mergliata made a mistake, and it happens. But, um, yeah, so I don't think it diminishes Derek Lewis at all. Um, I would have liked to have seen that fight go on. So do you think he kind of keeps his ranking right now in the heavyweight division? It's a good question. I mean, that's up to you guys. We'll see what happens uh, on Tuesday after you guys do the rankings. Thanks. Cool. Dana, following up here yeah. on the Dallas question, um, I saw an article on Dallas Morning News, I believe, where they talked about AT&T Stadium. And you said that, I guess that's a possibility that you've tried with Jerry Jones, but not yet. So um, is there a timetable for, for that venue, considering, you know, Canelo has fought there twice, Manny Pacquiao, you're a boxing fan as well. So as far as AT&T Stadium, when can we possibly see that? Yeah, we've been talking, you know, Jerry and I for 10 years about that. But um, it, it's just, ah, you just got to here, – here's my thing. I, I'm all about – the experience. I'm all about the right experience. Um, I'm not about throwing 100,000 people in, an, in a stadium to, you know, like in, t in here tonight. If you're in, even if you're in, you know, the cheapest seats, you're still part of the fight. I mean, you, if we, we do it at, at Dallas, Texas Stadium, it's going to be like watching guys fucking ants fight on this thing right here. You know what I mean? If you're in the wrong seats. And, and that's not the experience that I want. You end up watching most of it on the, on the big screen. I like arenas. I like, you know, I, I like tonight. I like feels like that. I like, I like uh, 15 to 25,000, you know? Yeah, I get it. Absolutely. Um, and obviously, at the time, I think GSP was here when you guys did a tour. Um, and can't for, I can't remember who else. Johnny Hendricks. Um, so, also, would you need, like, the star caliber – athlete for that as well? Well, yeah, you need to sell 100,000 tickets. I mean, you can't just throw anybody in one of those fights. you got to have the right fight at the right time. Um, but we've also had really good experience. Ronda and Holly in a soccer stadium in Australia was pretty awesome. Um, the GSP fight, like you mentioned, that we did in, uh, 
and Toronto was awesome and in, 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 in a big stadium. So I don't know. I, I, I just I like arenas better, though. Thank you. Yep. Hey, Dana. Um, so whenever you pick a card, like, and you pick a location, like, in Dallas, do you look at um, if that fighter is from the home state? Like, you had Alex Morono. He fights out of Houston. And then you had Derek Lewis, obviously, who fought out of Houston. Fight promoting 101. The guy on the main card absolutely positively has to be from the place that, 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 that you're holding the fight, okay? And then when people get so big that they turn into massive superstars, you would do it in Atlantic City, Las Vegas, or Madison Square Garden, right? And, and sometimes the Staples Center, depending. Um, we were just talking, what, did we, what was it, Arizona that we were talking about that day? What, what, was, the, what was the nationalities? Yeah. Huh? Adesanya and Vittori. Yeah. So, so think about this, what the UFC has been doing lately, right? We're, going, we're in Arizona with an Italian from fucking Italy, right, and, and a kid from New Zealand, and it sells out, and the place is going. It's just, you know, when you really think about how much we've changed the game um, on so many different levels, including the way fights are sold, promoted, and you know, where they're held, it's pretty crazy, you know. I Literally, me, Crawford, and Tyson were saying tonight, imagine growing up thinking that you could sell out an arena in Dallas, Texas with two women and break the arena record where the Mavericks play. Think about that. So do you feel like now you can sell out Anywhere you go at this point, is that how far, you know, the company has grown? Well, we have been. I mean, we're on our 21st straight sellout. Um, I wouldn't be as arrogant to say that I think we could sell out anywhere we go. Um, but we're on a hell of a run. Just going off of that, Dana, does that mean promoting has, in your experience, become easier as you guys have gotten bigger or harder because people see how big you are and want to uh, harder to deal with? It's never, th th let me tell you what, th this thing is anything but easy, you know what I mean? Um, it's why so many people, so many people, this, this looks so easy and it's fun, it's exciting to be around, it's, it's, you know, this is literally the dream job for all of us. I mean, you guys get to sit in the best fucking seats, cover the best sport, watch the best fights in the world, um, but it's not easy, there's a... There's a, there's, there's a formula to this whole thing, and many people who are a lot smarter than me and have a lot more money than me have tried to do it and failed. Um, I, I don't know if I answered your question, but it ain't fucking easy. That I can tell you. Um, you deal with so many outside forces in this thing from, you know, injuries to personal problems to I, we just go on for days for, with all the stuff that we deal with behind the scenes and that our lawyers have to deal with and our PR people have to deal with and the list goes on and on. Good? Have a great night. Thanks, Dallas.